If you had £50,000 to spend on something fast and fun, what would you get? That's the kind of cash you might want to splash on a sports car like this Porsche Cayman T. Or maybe, if you want to go down the hot hatch route, you could get the Mercedes-AMG A45S. On the surface, the Cayman is the obvious winner. Given the choice between spending 50k on a hatchback or a car that carries a reputation as one of the finest sports cars of our time, the decision is a bit of a no-brainer. Plus, just look at the Cayman. It's beautiful. The very definition of aspirational. It's not just pretty to look at either. This is the definitive driver's car. And more than that, it's the definitive version of the definitive driver's car. The Cayman T is, I guess what you'd call a greatest hits basically. So it has all the standard stuff that you get in a normal Cayman, plus all the options that you'd wanna buy to make the Cayman the ultimate version of itself. You get a limited slip differential, you get active torque vectoring and active engine mounts. The car also comes on 20-inch rather than 18-inch wheels, gets Porsche Active Suspension Management, which provides a 20mm drop in ride height, 10mm lower than if you were to spec the same option on a non-Cayman T, not to mention Cayman T stickers on the side. It's basically Porsche saying, listen, if you want the ultimate Cayman, these are the bits you need, and we're going to lump them all into one car so you haven't got to think about it. All very promising, but there's one thing that lets the Cayman down massively, and you might be able to hear it. Can you hear that? Yeah, that to me doesn't really sound like a Porsche. It sounds more like disappointment. Basically, it's the sound of a horizontally opposed four-cylinder turbocharged engine doing its best to make 300 horsepower and 380 newton meters of torque. Not exactly mind-blowing figures, and not exactly mind-blowing performance either. The manual box in this car helps it do 0 to 62 in 5.3 seconds. If you spec the car with the PDK gearbox and Sport Chrono, it is a bit quicker, but even then it only manages 0 to 62 in 4.7 seconds, almost a full second slower than the A45S. I'm gonna give the engine some credit though, because one of the problems with the previous generation model, the naturally aspirated cars, is that you really had to ring them out to get any torque whatsoever. So what tended to happen is that you ended up driving a bit like a hooligan anywhere you went simply to get decent torque. But in this, the torque's available right when you need it in the mid-range. Okay, there's a little bit of turbo lag, but you squeeze it and it pulls so nicely. As for the gearbox, well, it might slow the car down massively. Like I said, 0 to 62 in 5.3. But what it does do is it makes the drive really, really engaging. The box is so tight, the throw is short, and it makes you feel like an absolute hero anytime you have to stir it. It's such an integral part of the driving experience in this car. Plus, on top of that, you don't have to heel and toe to feel like a hero. It does the automatic downshifting. Watch this, right turn, chains down, it blips the engine, gets the revs up to exactly where you need them to make sure that the changes are buttery smooth. The one major downside of the gearbox is that the Cayman T has extremely long gearing, by which I mean the gears are just a little too far apart. There's often an annoying lag in acceleration with every upshift, and on tighter corners that are not quite slow enough to require first, but not quite fast enough to require second, you're often left in a torque no man's land. One of the highlights of this car, well actually maybe the highlight is the steering, that's always been the Cayman's party trick really, having amazing steering feel. You can turn it in and you feel exactly when the grip's about to run out and it gives you so much confidence because you can lean on the front end. Or at least you can in the dry. The Cayman's Pirelli P0 tires are poor in cold, wet conditions. Approaching a corner quickly in an effort to keep the revs up results in debilitating understeer. Approaching a corner slowly and in too low a gear results in a loss of rear grip when the torque suddenly arrives in the mid-range. In the wet, with standard tyres, it can be frustrating, so either consider a tyre upgrade or drive it hard only when it's dry. Overall, the Cayman is an absolute joy to drive. If you want a car that makes you feel like you're an integral part of the machine, you're a cog in a much larger machine, then there aren't many cars that do it better.
the A45S on paper shouldn't do it better. Yes, it's an AMG, so we know it's fast, but it's also an A-Class. An A-Class that cost a whopping £50,000. Surely there's no way it can justify that price tag, especially when we're comparing it to a purpose-built sports car. But it does have its advantages. If practicality and livability are important to you, then the A45S basically wipes the floor with the Cayman T. Even though the front and rear storage space in the Cayman T are technically slightly larger than the one you get in this A45S, the A45S is the boot that you want to use for your day-to-day -day shopping. It's just much more convenient. Plus, it's got five doors, which means that you can carry multiple passengers, up to five. Well, four and one very skinny one in the middle of the back. And then there's the actual interior design. This, weirdly, even though the Porsche is a more special car, in theory, feels like the more special vehicle. I mean, I love these vents up here on the dashboard that kind of resemble the turbines in a fighter jet. Then you've got these twin 10-inch displays that look as if they were lifted from a widescreen IMAX cinema. The whole thing just feels incredibly special. Weirdly, it also feels more special when you put your foot down. This car also uses a two-liter engine, but this engine is an engine you can actually be proud of. This engine doesn't make 300 horsepower. It makes 421. This engine doesn't make 380 newton meters of torque. It makes 500. And that means it can tackle 0 to 62 in 3.9 seconds, way quicker than you can manage it in the Cayman T. And then there's the noise. I know four-cylinder engines tend not to sound that great, but the one in this A45S <laughs> just sounds tremendous. You put it in race mode and every time you change up, you get a nice gunshot from the exhaust. Then you lift off and you get these pops and bangs. There's a lot of theater, a lot of drama to driving this hatchback. A lot more than you get in the sports car, weirdly. Some of that noise is augmented through the speakers, but it's a realistic, rewarding sound that really does add to the overall driving experience. And real or fake, it still sounds better than the Cayman T. One area where the Porsche should have this hatchback completely licked is in its handling balance and the fact that it's rear wheel drive. You should be able to pull some quite spectacular shapes in the Porsche. But guess what? This car actually drifts too. It has a drift mode. You turn into a corner, make sure you're in the right gear, get on the power. And it slides. And I'm not talking about lift off oversteer or using the handbrake. I'm talking about genuine power slides under power. This thing. is an absolute hooligan. The grip levels, tremendous. The balance, really nice. Nowhere near as nice as you get in the Cayman. Okay, one more drift. But it actually feels a lot like a sports car. Oddly, the A45S feels better than the Cayman on turning, certainly in the wet, and that's down to its far superior Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires. You can really attack corners even in damp conditions and either carry the speed for a neat exit or dig the front end in nicely so you're set up for power oversteer. Also, because of the shorter gearing and superior power and all-wheel drive, the A45S always feels like the quicker car, especially in conditions like these. What you do feel is that the center of gravity is a little bit higher, so there's a little bit more body roll in this car. And then there's the gearbox. I'd say that's one of the weaker elements in this car. It's an eight-speed DCT. And my gripe with it is that it doesn't feel necessarily as quick and responsive as I want. Occasionally, it works really well, but sometimes when you want another gear, it's just half a second behind where you want it to change up or down. But the rest of the car, Magnificent. The brakes, really strong, really confidence inspiring. It's just a nice, fun car to drive really fast. £50,000 will buy you an awful lot of car, and it's great to see that the options available to us are so varied. You can opt for a traditional sports car in the shape of a Cayman T and enjoy a car that's beautiful, aspirational, and in the right conditions, brilliant to drive. Or you can pick up the more sensible option and buy a hot hatch that, while perhaps not as cool, makes up for that with staggering all-weather performance.
Which is best? Well, that comes down to what you want. If you're after a true sports car and like the design and driver-focused nature of the Cayman, then buy the Cayman. If you're after something more sensible, the A45 wins hands down. Which would I choose? Well, on a day like today, with the British weather doing this, my preference would be the AMG, not just because of its practicality, but also because of its superior grip and traction, superior speed through corners and on straights, and superior cabin. That said, whichever car you go for won't leave you disappointed. Whichever car you go for will be £50,000 well spent.